Yeah. No, I, I have to go. I'm, I'm doing a show live. Ma, put, put that on the phone. Just put them quick. I, I got to. I got to I got to do. Hi, Dad. How you doing? Happy Father's Day. No, this is what I do now, Dad. I don't have anything to fall back on. No, this is what this is. I'm doing. I'm doing a show. I really I really have to go. I just want to say love you and and happy father. It's a comedy show. No, you can't watch it on television. It's not on television. It's on the it's on the Internet. The Internet. The web. Forget, forget it. Listen, I love you. Happy Father's Day. And uh, no, I, I'm not going to use my accounting degree. I am not. I, do we have to talk about this all the time? I bet you. When my father. All right. Listen here. Listen. I will call you after the show. I have guests. We have comics. It's it's all about comedy. From the, I told. Do I have to explain this every time? It's all about comedy from the perspective of the people who do it. I'll explain it to you later. All right, got, guys, we should start the show. Let, let's start. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Welcome to the Father's Day edition of This Week in Comedy. Uh, I'm Ed Krasnick. I'm a father myself. I want to say uh, hello to my daughter, Shana, who graduated preschool the other day. Uh, I'm still taking pills to calm down. Um, I'm a very proud dad. Hi, Shana. I love you, honey. Uh, I've already said the word love a hundred times, and the show is not two minutes old, because I'm full of love. I love comedy, and that's why I'm doing the show. What is This Week in Comedy? People ask me every day, uh, and I don't have an answer for it. No, uh, This Week in Comedy is a show about all things comedy from the perspective of the people who make comedy. Writers, directors, actors, producers, comedians, um, all kinds of people talking about comedy right here every Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, and wherever else you are, figure it out. Um, I'm thrilled tonight because it is Father's Day, and it gets me to thinking uh, not only about my own dad, and by the way, that, that phone call, uh, my parents, of course, are deceased, and uh, yet we still talk every week on the phone. So it's a pleasure to uh, introduce that technology. Um, so here we are in This Week in Comedy. It is the Father's Day edition, and basically I wanted to tip my hat to the, some of the fathers of comedy. I don't, we don't have time for, for all of it, but I wanted to take a look at some clips from some people who have been very influential in comedy. Uh, I think the first one that we should take a look at tonight is um, Jack Benny. Because from Jack Benny uh, came, of course, Johnny Carson and then David Letterman. So let's take a look at a, a brief clip of Jack Benny um, doing what he does, one of the strongest characters of all time. Here's Jack. Well, that was, uh, of course, Jack Benny and Giselle McKenzie. You're watching a comedy show that has the name Giselle McKenzie in it. So welcome aboard. Uh, obviously, a little bit, little bit old school, but, but really, uh, the thing that's so great about Jack Benny, of course, is there's never been anybody, like Albert Brooks said about him, who could just look. Jack Benny is a guy who could look and make people laugh for 50 years. He did this. Great character. Now, from Jack Benny comes uh, Johnny Carson. And from Johnny Carson comes David Letterman. So let's take a look right now at two more fathers uh, of comedy. Uh, we're going to take a look at the night that Johnny Carson, his last appearance, uh, a special visit to uh, Late Night, then Late Night with David Letterman. Let's take a look at uh, Letterman and a special top ten list. This top ten list, the host of The Tonight Show. For 30 years, Johnny Carson. Johnny! <laughs> Yeah. 
You're worth every penny, pinhead. Good night, suckers. Well, right up to that point, it was so easy I could host it. All right, tonight's top ten list from the home office in Sioux City, Iowa. Oh, this is not the list. Johnny, can I have the top ten list? See, that's, uh, that's Letterman and Carson, and that's, that's how it is when, when, you, when you have a legend, a true legend. I mean, that audience is not pumped up. There's no artificial applause there. That's how they feel about Johnny Carson, because for 30 years, there was nobody who did it better. And David Letterman knew that, and that's why uh, that clip is so special. Ed, you me. don't have to beg. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and here's another I father of comedy. I get it. This man. I get the parallel. Well, you, you, I see what you're you, trying to say. Were you down the hall? <laughs> were you filming across What'd the you hall? What'd you do my cigarette were box? You <laughs> Look at that. Kevin Pollack, everybody. Come on. <laughs> Talk about fathers of comedy. My God. You never know who's going to drop in. It's unbelievable. Sid Charisse is here. Um, I have no, my references are like from, people are like looking in dictionaries right now, trying to figure out. All right, one, a couple last things and we'll get, we'll get uh, to a big show. We have tremendous guests tonight, by the way. We have comedian, actor Jeff Bolt up from the Bay Area, a genius. Uh, we also have the comedy team of Evan and Gareth, uh, Evan, Evan Mann and Gareth Reynolds. They have videos out, they have shows, that, they're amazing, you're going to love them. We have the comedy news with Cat Steele coming up shortly. We have a contest, I'm going to have my blood pressure and urine taken tonight, I, I can't believe I went there, uh, with the classic uh, comedy. All right, let's take a look at just, just quickly, uh, one more uh, father of comedy, and that of course would be Richard Pryor. Now Richard Pryor did the definitive concert film called Richard Pryor Live in Concert, where I uh, actually went when I was a kid. Amazing. Take a look at Richard Pryor work. My grandmother could do that shit real good. That's how she made me stop snorting cocaine. <laughs> she did. She pulled that shit on me at work, too. I had the nerve to pull out some cocaine at the dining room table. She had never seen me do any, right? And she looked at me a long time. She said, What's that you putting up your nose? I said, cocaine, mama. Jesus, God, take me now, Lord, take me now. God, save my life, take me, take me, take me, take me. God, I'm gonna take me, take me, take me, take me. I said, mama, don't do that shit, look. I'm throwing the shit out, mama, look, look. $1,600 worth of shit down the drain, mama. She found out how much it cost. She said, you dumb motherfucker. You could have sold some of that shit back to the man you got it from. I told you that shit make you ignorant. God damn your soul. <laughs> my grandmother's the lady who used to discipline me, right? You know, beat my ass. <laughs> Anyone here remember them switches? You, you used to have to go get off the tree yourself and take them leaves like that. I see them trees today. I will kill one of them motherfuckers. I will stop the car and say, wait, hold it. Yeah, listen, yeah, mm -hmm. you ain't never going to grow up. You won't be beating nobody's ass. Like a 
Charles, that's some hell. Do I have a tumor or did it get dark in here? Because <laughs> that's some hell of a psychology, right, to make you go get a switch to beat your own ass with. Right? My grandma said, boy, go get me something to beat your ass with. And that would be the longest walk in the world, right? You be talking about. And you be thinking all kind of shit, right? Because you know you done fucked up, Jack. That <laughs> maybe it'll snow before I get there or something. <laughs> maybe she'll have a heart attack and won't be able to whoop me. I don't want to get no whoop because it's going to tear it up. I know it. And you know you couldn't come back with no little switch, right? Because if you did, she'd go out and get the tree and beat your ass with it, right? You'd be like, please, I don't want to get a woman in it. And you get them switches and they start cutting the wind on the way home right here. Make you start crying before you get in the house. Like, Mama! So welcome back to This Week in Comedy. You're watching Richard Pryor. I'm Ed Krasnick. And I got to tell you, while I was pulling those clips, uh, Jack Benny and, uh, of course, Carson and Letterman and then Richard Pryor, uh, you know, I, I became a little kid again. And I realized why it is that I love comedy. I mean, I, I had forgotten for a while. And now I remembered by looking at my heroes. So happy Father's Day to the fathers uh, of comedy and to you for watching. I'm very happy. Thank you for putting us on your desktop. Please feel free to minimize us. Uh, put us behind an overdue gas bill. It doesn't matter, but just keep us on. Would you please? Right now, it's my pleasure to welcome to uh, This Week in Comedy, um, Cat Steele with the Comedy News. Hi there. Hey, Cat. Thank you for having me, oh, Ed. So I appreciate it. I'm so it. glad that you're here. You brighten up this place, I'm telling you right now. Oh, People have to look at me. Oh, um, How you doing? Everything? Uh, Everything's good, yeah. You know, things are good in your life? Things are going hey okay at the moment. Uh, Nothing just to... Just trying to keep busy. Just trying to keep busy? <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Well, Kat, uh, I'm, I don't know why I'm looking here when I'm talking to you, but I really appreciate you being here. And, Tell us a little bit what's going on in the about what's going on in the comedy world. Absolutely. Yeah. So, we have a bunch of things going on. We do have a comedy, an en français, just for laughs, just pour rire, uh, festival going on. Yes, yes, the just for laughs festival. That's sure. right. That's sure. going on July seventh through the eighteenth. Okay. So. Part of my French, but stop on by. <laughs> okay. We have a bunch of other international things going on. We've got the Edinburgh Festival Fringe, August 6th through the 30th. Okay. We have the New York Underground Comedy Festival, which will be August 15th through the 22nd. We also have Bumbershoot Seattle Arts Festival happening September 4th through the 6th. The Vancouver Fringe Festival, September 8th through the 9th. And the Global Comedy Fest, which is also in Canada, in Vancouver, September 16th through the 26th. Fantastic. That's, those are all wonderful festivals. And of course, I'll be appearing in the uh, Mr. Anxiety Festival, which is, ha is ongoing. Is it like I Burning Man? It is like Burning Man, okay. but it's like Burning Man emotionally. Oh. Um, so what, uh, now, what, now there's things that are happening um, all over the country. We have amazing comedy clubs. We have, and, and maybe, you know, the first thing, when I think of comedy, I think of, uh, I think of Jews and I think of New York. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on over there? Well, let me tell you about our East Coast. All right. Over here at KGB Bar, we have The Complete Performer. It is a Letterman Emmy winning written. He's, his name is Ted Greenberg. Sure. Back up the boat here. Sure. He's won an Emmy. He's written for Letterman. Uh, he has all these entertainment genres that he's wrapped into one show under 53 minutes. So for the show, stopping finale, he drives audience members home in a licensed yellow taxi. See. That's I know. what I call full Metaphors, service. Metaphors, man. Yeah, that, no, he really does. That's what I call full service. It's it's a it's a car. You have to drive people home. You have to give them something. That's right, and he delivers a lot. He does improv, mind reading, sleight of hand, live simulcast of the beat the clock cab ride. It sounds wonderful. <laughs> it sounds pretty good. And uh, and there are other things happening. I mean, that's pretty much enough. You don't need to see anything else in New York. But I understand that there's also, uh, you know, there are a bunch of documentaries out now about comedy. And one of them is I Am Comic with uh, Jordan Brady. 
Um, but and Paul Prevenza's course has got his show called Green Room on Showtime. You have to watch Green Room. But but there's another. The Onion is doing something. I read they have a film that's uh, that's going to be happening uh, about comedy. I think it's it's uh, it's called Is This a Joke? Wonderful. Oh yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, New York comedian Liam uh, McIrney. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, so my apologies. It's okay. Um, he has a lot of famous friends, and so he is doing this Monday night showcase called Tell Your Friends. Right. It's going to be down at Lolita Bar in New York. Right. Um, he's played with such an amazing roster of alternative comedians. I mean, Fred Armisen to Aziz Ansari, who just hosted the MTV Awards, as I recall. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so it's called Tell Your Friends, the comedy concert movie filming. Um, it's going to include sets by, oh my gosh, so many comedians we're going to have. Um, Kristen Schaal, Reggie Watts, yeah. Leo Allen, and Kristen Finnegan, yeah. Rob Perorovian, right. <laughs> and, yeah. 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 and uh, the ever-present A Brief View of the Hudson. Nobody has like a regular name anymore. You have no. to be, you have to have a five-syllable name. That's why I'm changing my name to Kabula la 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 ba la la ha. Um, now the the other thing I you know I wanted to mention this is an amazing thing that they're doing in Boston they're doing this every month there it's called it's called the Comedy Studio and they host a new comic in residence and they have you play there for the entire month to develop your act and develop your persona if they had had something like that when I started I'd be a lot further along nice to see you um, at, at any rate uh, now and and then uh, I see that in Chicago we have uh, the writers from Conan O'Brien. We do, yeah. We have Team Coco presents the Conan Writers Live. It's going to be at the Bank of America Theater, so check that out. Um, all the Conan Writers are going to be, or not all of them, but a good handful of them will be touring. It's an LA-based show. It yeah. has Andy Richter and Reggie Watts. So The, the best writers in, in television, absolutely. Those guys mm -hmm. are amazing. And let me just say that the Bank of America and theater should never be in the same sentence. Um, <laughs> all right, so, and, and I just want to, this is a personal thing. I mean, we just want to say hello to the, the folks at the Marsh in San Francisco. It was one of the first first theaters that, that had uh, solo performers, one-man shows. I want to say hello to the Marsh, 20, 20 years, uh, 20th anniversary, uh, a great place, the Marsh in San Francisco. And we have uh, occasionally unusual but cool events, like Picks of the Week. And for this week, this is, an, uh, this is a real, this is, this is going to kill you. Go ahead. It's... All right. This one's going to be in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Um, it's called Slapstickon. Slapstickon, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Okay. There's a con for everything these days. <laughs> right. So, might as well have one. Uh, it's a four day film festival. It's going to be July every year, so an annual event. Uh, it's going to have screenings of very rarely seen comedy bits. Um, I mean, we're talking really, really old stuff yeah. like silent comedy, yeah. um, stuff that came, the talky era, right. things like that. So, it's going to be an opportunity to see these things. In a whole different venue. It's a great. It's a great idea. I mean, it's 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 silent films. It's a silent film festival. Um, I uh, have a silent communication festival that I do, uh, which you're going to enjoy for the next hour and a half. Uh, but no, that's in Washington in July. I think that's great. And here in LA, of course, we have amazing, amazing comedy. We have great we places to We're see. We're really, comedy. really lucky. Yeah. Uh, so many things going on. We have at the M Bar. We have Zach Galifianakis, Dana Gould. So many other people. That's, it's just insane. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. At the Fit Gallery, we have the showatorium going on. It's mm -hmm. a one-minute sketch show. Mm -hmm. So check that out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, down at Largo, we have David Bickle, our friend Mr. Kevin Pollock, and Nick Kroll will be on. That's an amazing show. So I'm gonna get to that show. Definitely stop by that. That should be wonderful. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Largo is a huge venue. We also have the John Bryan show live on stage every Friday night. Yeah. If you so. haven't seen John Bryan, John Bryan is a guy. He's a he did all the music for Magnolia and he's, uh, he's done a lot of uh, studio composing. But he, what he does in his show is basically you, you yell up any song that you want, and he basically does an orchestral version of the song by himself on stage. Amazing. The guy is a genius, and he's very funny, but he, he plays all the instruments. So, Whoa, so he'll do, so. yeah, I mean, you could do, you'd think that people would have had enough of silly love songs, and he makes it sound not so silly. Um, yeah, he's amazing. So anyway, John Bryan. And then we have Louis C.K. in our Comedia file. Yes, we do. He's got a new pilot, Louis. Yeah. It's going to be shown weekly on FX, so check it out. Yeah. Um, it's going to be following the HBO series Lucky Louis, which is much closer to C.K.'s real life yeah, and that's, style. Yeah, that, that's true. This is him. And that's a, let this be a lesson to people who want to do a show on television. If you're going to do it, put it name it after your first name. <laughs> it just makes it so much easier. And then when people say, hey, you, hey, Louie, he can answer them in life and on the show. 
Good luck to you, Louie. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, we also have the Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I don't know if you watch Comedy Central at all, but I do, I do. it's a surreal sort of adult cartoon experience. Yeah. Not, not in a naughty way, but you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, any show that has that would dare to have a, a talking milkshake is, is, in my book, a classic already. It's a show I want to see. Yeah, already. <laughs> Drink it in. Um, okay, so Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And then, and then uh, we have some friends in the media that we just want to say hello to. We have, uh, please listen to the Jordan Rich Show. That's on WBZ Radio in Boston every Saturday and Sunday night. And watch The Green Room with Paul Provenza. It is the m groundbreaking show about comedians. It really shows comedians as who they are, what they do, what kind of people they are, and I love it, and watch it every Thursday night on Showtime. Absolutely. We have so many other things going on, too. We have Andy Kindler on Last Comic Standing, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend you check out. Greg Bernhardt is going to be on There Might Be Cake on yep. IFC. Greg Bernhardt will be on there. And if you're in London, listen to Steve Perry on Tuesdays at 10, uh, London time. That's Steve Perry. And... Um, Kat, I can't thank you enough for coming in to do this. Is that it? We're done? That's pretty much it. Well, crazy. <laughs> I can't sorry. believe it. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Throw this up in the air and I'll do a poll right. thing. I'll do the thing. Ready? Okay. Yep. Poll. <laughs> Boom. It's oh, out. you got me. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for having me. Ed. I it, had a blast. It is so nice to have <laughs> you. And, and please uh, let us know what's going on. I'm going to be calling you throughout the week uh, for up to the minute, up to uh, updates in terms of what's going on comedically, because I need to laugh. <laughs> And uh, I need some other things in my life besides therapy. I understand. Okay. <laughs> Cat Steele, everybody. She'll be back again next week. Thank you so much. The Comedy News. Yeah. All right. This week in comedy. Off to a big, big, big roll here. Uh, I do want to go back to Father's Day for just a second. Um, I want to uh, talk, uh, tell you a little story about my own dad and our, and our relationship. Um, it's a little story, so it's going to be a minute. Um, basically, the year is 1978, and my father and I are sitting on the edge of a, our parents, my parents' bed watching a one-game playoff between the Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees. And as a Red Sox fan, we were pretty nervous in those days. My father is sitting here. I'm sitting here. They have a bedspread that looks like an angry Jewish woman just finger-painted all over the bedspread. It looks like the spread of what dreams may come. It's a very strange thing. And we're sitting there, and I'm leaning on my father's shoulder, and Carl Yastrzemski, his idol, number eight, comes up for the Boston Red Sox. And it's a big moment because the story is about the first time I ever saw my father cry. And I'll tell you what happened. Ron Guidry is on the mound. He was 26-3 and three that year for the Yankees, and he throws a ball on the outside of the corner of the plate, and Yaz reaches out, and he got it. Going, going, gone. Right in the right field stands. Yastrzemski starts rounding the bases. And I look over at my father, and my father is crying. And I said, Daddy, you okay? Why are you crying? And he said, because, Ed, I'm trapped in a marriage I don't understand. So there you have the Father's Day bonding moment of a lifetime. Now, uh, before I bring on our first guest, I want to uh, look at one of the fathers of professional comedy, uh, actually had a comedy school. And this man, of course, is named Albert Brooks, and he is uh, undoubtedly one of the geniuses of comedy. Uh, and be but before he did all the films, before he acted in all those, uh, all those big films, he had a school for professional comedians. Take a look. Hello, I'm Albert Brooks, and I'm speaking to you on behalf of the famous School for Comedians located on 22 gorgeous acres near Arlington National Park. <laughs> How many times have you gotten nice laughs at a party, had a friend turn to you and say, you know something? That was pretty funny. You should think about being a comedian. Well, your friend was right. Yes, the comedy fraternity of show business is a fast-paced, nutty, funny world. There are always openings for good comedy talent. But you say, I just don't know if I have what it takes to become a professional, Albert. So I say, why not find out? Yes, that's right. <laughs> we'll send you a free comedy talent test that will tell us in just five short minutes whether or not you have a future in comedy. But more about that later. First, come with me, if you will, and let's have a brief look at the school. I think you'll like what you see. First today, we'll visit Comedy Take class. 
Here the students practice all kinds of takes. The double take, the elbow take, and today they're working on the spit take, made so famous by Danny Thomas on Make Room for Daddy. <laughs> Remember when Danny would be drinking coffee? His agent, Sid, would come in with some surprising news. <laughs> Danny would spit the coffee all over Sid and the furniture. Let's see how these kids are doing. All right, now that was pretty good, but I'd like to try it just one more time in the same way. Now remember, I've just walked into the room. Now start to drink. Good. Now I speak. Guess what? I just heard from the bank, and not only don't you have any money, but your sister is dead. <laughs> How funny is that? I mean, for God's sakes, it's Albert Brooks. And, and of course, we all try to master the spit take, and a lot of people don't, the dribbling, a lot of people don't know how to master it. Um, I want to tell you tonight also that the show is sponsored by Knock Knock Stuff, knockknockstuff.com. And of course, we have Knock Knock Stuff makes, puts the fun in functional, our good friend Jen Billick. Uh, we have slang flashcards such as this. Uh, this fil the fillet is straight off the chain tonight. You can learn how to say phrases like that. You can have dysfunctional family bingo. It's real. I've played it. It's helped me. Knock knock stuff. We have uh, my dysfunctions, uh, a journal which has inspirational quotes and uh, the design of this stuff is amazing. Putting the fun and functional knock knock stuff, our sponsor. Um, okay, so now it's a pleasure to welcome uh, my next guest to This Week in Comedy, a good friend up from the Bay Area, comedian, actor in films such as Mrs. Doubtfire, many other films, a million commercials all over the country, Mr. Jeff Bolt. Jeff, we're Thank live. You. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> it's good to have you here. It's good to be here. I, uh, just, I, I didn't know there was a, you, you never actually mentioned that uh, this was uh, on camera. I thought this was kind of a uh, internet radio chat deal thing. So would you rather, would, should we turn the camera, should we turn them down? No, but I would have, uh, you know, I just thought, you know, because uh, I did makeup or whatever, I would have done the tan. I have a membership at the tan at a tanning thing, and uh, it would have been great because then I could have, every t ten times you go in there, they give you, a, they hit your card and you get a little coupon thing, so you get the free, it would have been free. But can, you didn't tell me, can so I, I can't, I'm not going to be able to use because it. Because I didn't tell you. You didn't tell me that it was right. on camera. So can can I, I ask no. you a question, like, right away, I want to get right, right I'm going to get right into it. Mm -hmm. Um are you wearing a bronzer? A bronzer? Yeah. No. No, I'm not. Do I look pretty good? Huh. You know what I do? I'm a, <laughs> I'm a member, if you want to write that down. I actually uh, am a big fan of uh, nature clubs. And I'm, so I do, I spend a lot of time outdoors. You know yeah. me. I'm pretty buff. I work out. I'm not, I'm, you know, women, <laughs> I'm designed for nudity is what I am designed for. I, and a lot of people uh, encourage me. When you get the encouragement, you like yeah. to take it. Take advantage of it. I uh, I have a gift. And, you now uh, now listen. You 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 made me do that. Now I I want to stop right now and I want to okay. say you you want to say hello to somebody tonight, who's out in the audience. Somebody that might be listening, probably at least listening if not watching. You're gonna do this to me. Is um, it is it okay if we do it? No, I just uh, you know I, sometimes I like to just uh, because it is uh, going out over the internet and I well I might as well, I just want to say hello to my uh, wife um, Donna Denise. Is it Donna or Denise? Uh, it's uh, Denise. I just want to say hi. Just want to say hi because I know she's watching and I just I don't want to tell you I love you a lot and I care for you uh, you know deeply and uh, I want you back. You want her to come back, then? Is it too painful? Should, is it too soon? No, it's been uh, 12 years, 12, 13 years. Still working it out. Still working it out. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, Denise, uh, Jeff is a good man, and obviously he cares very deeply. And if this is how he is when he's not wearing makeup, can you imagine what would happen when he's fully prepared? You know, it's funny. She, uh, I can't even remember the reason she left. You know what I mean? It's been that long. <laughs> you, was, don't huh? what, you don't even know what happened, really. I don't remember what happened because I wasn't, uh, you know, I mean, I woke up, when I woke up, let's see, we weren't even in Santa Cruz anymore when I woke up. Because that's when I went, anyway, uh, that was 
that was a long time ago. Anyway. All right. Well, now, now listen. Now, Jeff, yeah. really, obviously, you, you've done comedy for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and you started, um, <clears throat> if you don't mind me telling people, mm -hmm. uh, you are a master ventriloquist. Well, thank you. I, uh, you know, I, there's so many ventriloquists that are out there right now. Am I yelling? <laughs> you are coming across a little let, strong. Let me know if You're I get You're coming too, on strong. You know why? This whole left side of my <laughs> face, does it seem stiff? It's paralyzed. Is you know it really? I, have, I have absolutely no feeling <laughs> over here. What, what if I ask See, you to like grab a, would you grab the pen with your left side? I, I'm, I'm trying to. I can do it over here. Do it with your mind. What, what I'm going to do. Do it with your mind. <laughs> no, nothing. nothing. Um, <laughs> You've just been watching an experiment in uh, kinesi uh, uh, there it telekinesis. Goes. Now it's back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, let me know if I'm yell uh, yelling. I don't want to yell. You're fine. I know we're, uh, no, I really, I really do want to. I really do want to ask you. You know, I, I, first of all, yeah. can you be? This is a this is a question I ask everybody because sure. I'm really interested. Sure. Can you be? Can mm -hmm. you be well adjusted? Mm -hmm. Happy. Mm -hmm. At peace. And at peace. And still be, be a stand-up comic. comedian. No. Write that down. But you know what? You can't be a pope. You can't be a pope. You can't be. A, you can't be a, a, an, ast an astronaut. You can't be a. <clears throat> you know a, a sky. You, nobody's well adjusted. I mean, everybody's a little, sick. A little crazy. No, I don't. Not just a little crazy. I mean, there, there's a lot of people out there that are. You know, they shouldn't be out there. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm not. Not a big, you guys. <laughs> whoever's watching, you should be out there. I don't know who they are. Um, the, 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 the thing is, uh, Jeff, uh, is, look, you are a guy who mm -hmm. you do a lot of different things with your comedy. Some, some people are just straight stand-up. Oh, yeah. You're not that You know way. what? I don't like people uh, staring at me. So that's the problem I have with stand-up. Now, I love, the, I love being up on stage. Yeah. I love the lights. Yeah. I love seeing people, the lines outside and whatnot. But don't bring them in. Don't I don't want if I'm performing? Yeah. To me, it's a distraction, and then, of course, after my set, uh, if I am I yelling? No, no, you're okay. good. So after uh, well, I'll do a set, <laughs> I'll be done with my set, and then out in the parking lot, you know, uh, you know, there's the uh, the pushing. Hey, you know, I don't. You, you don't know, like I the don't, pushing? I don't like the shoving and the and the name calling that goes on backstage in the green room, and then. And then when you uh, and then when you go out into the parking lot, and you're trying to get to your car really quick. <clears throat> you'll get people from the theater that saw you, and they'll come. You know, they'll track you down. They'll track <clears throat> you down, hunt you down. A lot of times, these people are friends of yours that you may have comped in to see the show or something. <laughs> That's right. I was going to ask you, are you good with hecklers? I do not. I carry a I, uh, Glock nine, which I'm, I'm licensed to carry because I've had so many problems just in the park where I live. You know, because some of the neighbors, they'll, uh, these people will burn anything, some of my neighbors. Yeah. They'll throw tires, uh, tires. Burn happy. They'll throw tires in trees yeah. on fire while the kids are still swinging. You know, that, but that's a tough neighborhood up there in Marin. It's a tough neighborhood. Very difficult. There are a lot of angry, bitter, uh, you know, well to do white people. The worst kind. They're the worst kind. Please continue watching. Now, uh, now Jeff. So a lot you you have a very I am very good tacklers, though. You asked me a question. Do I you wanna... have any? How do you come back? I don't. You know, some comedians are great at it. Yeah. Can you say bad words on your show? You here? can on this show. Because yeah. these comedians are great. You'll get you'll get. Uh, I've seen them. They'll be they'll be heckled. Hey, you know, somebody will go. You you suck. You you know you stink. You're a, the terrible comedian. You know. Yeah. And uh, and they say it to me, and I. I got to go with them. You know, lots of times they're right because I don't have any material. Right. But other comedians, they'll have a snappy. They come back. They come back. I'll go really, you know? Yeah, yeah. Hey, nice shirt. You know, nice neck. Yeah. You know, you're fat. Or you know, mm -hmm. fuck you, fuck me, <laughs> fuck you, fuck you. You know? I mean, they're so quick. I don't know how they do it. it. It's so it, they, they're how great. How do they do it? I don't know. I don't know it's just they uh, now, they're really good. And I. Uh, about a month ago, because yeah. uh, it's Father's Day actually, but um, no. Anyway, about a month ago, I was in a club in the, in the city, and I was getting heckled in San Francisco. Sure, heckled badly, yeah. and I uh, heard it really clearly. Yeah, it was one of these "you suck, you stink, get off the stage" things. I heard it so clear. I think everybody in the whole room heard it. Yeah, because it was so quiet that night in there, mm. and. Uh, 
And uh, anyway, I, the thing that upset me about it was I had uh, comp these people in to see the show for free. Man, well, that's you know, idea. because it was uh, their wedding anniversary. And I th you'd think that your you know, mom and dad would be proud to see their son on stage performing. Well, that's just a bad time. That's just something you want to Happy Father's forget. Day to you, you know. Yeah, yeah that would have that? been a good that would have been a good comeback if it was on Father's Day. I wish I had uh, a comeback for that. I know. But Pro they were they were right. Uh, I don't think so. I, because you do so many different things. I have I mean, lots of setups, lots of setups. <laughs> You're the king of the setups. But I have no I've never really been able to nail the the uh, punchline thing. Have you thought about joining a team? No, I, uh, but here's the thing. I'm now, Jeff, about it. I don't know why I'm singing it, but, uh, but Jeff, seriously, you, you, have, uh, you, you have a couple different skills which are amazing. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't, can't even do one of these things. Mm -hmm. You do great characters. Mm -hmm. you're, a ma you're a tremendous improviser. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not joking now. And, and, and uh, maybe, uh -huh. and, and you and are also a professional dancer. You're a professional you dancer. You didn't mention that. And you work. You know what I don't like about dancing? What's that? The m music throws me off a little bit. That's right. But I love to dance. I really do. Do you want to do something here? No. No. Because <laughs> I'm hearing music. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, no, anyway. I. Uh, but you but you do ca you do character work, and I know you're very interested. I don't do uh, uh, impersonations. I Not impersonations, but no. character work. Right. You're very uh, interested in psychology, right? I am. And one of the characters that you do... Oh, I, I, I see where you're going. Yeah, I do a, a character who... Uh, he, uh, Dr. Moody uh, uh, Lederhosen. Dr. Moody Lederhosen is a mass sociologist. Mass sociopsychologist. Sociopsychologist. Yeah. And he is from... So he studied at the Carl Jung Institute in Zurich, Switzerland. Some of the uh, your viewers probably familiar with... Not, probably not. Probably, Probably not. nobody. No, uh, uh, but but you do you do. Can you give us a little? Can we do just a short? You want me to do an impersonation? Well, no, the ca you. impersonation of Moody Lederhosen. Okay, I just mean, the if I had Do you a, have anything? Well, I wish I had a tip jar. Uh, do you have? Um, let's see. Okay, well, he would wear. These aren't his glasses, but they they, they would be glasses. Okay, let's, let's. Okay, so we'll start over. And, we're starting over. Oh, this okay. is a new. Okay. Completely, you've never okay. seen this before. You don't know who I am. You don't know who Jeff is. We're brand new to you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the uh, This Week in Comedy uh, stages, uh, mass socio-psychologist, uh, Dr. Dr. Moody Lederhosen. Moody Doctor? Lederhosen, nice to see you. Good to see you, Doctor. Congratulations on your programming. Wow. And I'm always a big fan of yours. You know, everybody says, oh, it's Eddie Krasnick's new podcast show. <laughs> you know, very exciting. And everybody says, oh, make sure when you're there to see uh, Mr. Krasnick, make sure you get the... Um, you know the with the you know the, uh, the signature sig autograph on the check oh, the before <laughs> you do the show because he's uh, you know your reputation is not uh, so good not uh, kind of a cheap <laughs> where cheap, are you cheap <laughs> where are you where do you practice Doctor Lederhosen I have a fifth wheel wheeler fifth wheeler on the back of my uh, car and so lots of times I'll be right now I'm out going to all the camps at grounds you know. Uh, doing a little uh, reconnaissance. Reconnaissance? Is that the right word? Bivouac? I, bivouac. Mil, is... mil, bivouac. <laughs> and so I'm uh, a lot of uh, people that I'm t or campers, you know, yeah. and I'll come around the camp's ground and they'll, because I have a uniform sometimes I'll put on. So initially they think I'm, I'm a ranger. Hello, ranger. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not a ranger at all you, because. Now, wait, now you are a, you're a psychologist. So you worked with, you work at the, in psychotherapy. Yes. You have patience. Let's say I had a problem. I had a problem, and I came to you, and I said, "I have a problem communicating. I, 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 I'm afraid of conflict. I don't, I don't stand up for myself." Well, you know, because somebody like you, I don't normally take as a client, because uh, my recommendation for somebody like you is just shelter in place. You know, a what? Shelter in place. Shelter in place. Shelter in place. You know, like there's an emergency. Shelter in place. <laughs> For you, I don't go outside. You know, you know I say stay away from others. That uh, other people. You have children. Child. I, I do. Mm. Not Try good. not to make uh, eye contact with her because they have abilities to see right through people. You know, because of their abilities. <laughs> and your wife, I recommend her. You know, having a cheat, cheating, cheat affair. You know, have they? You know, Las Vegas or whatever. That's Dr. Moody Lederhosen from Liechtenstein, I believe. Uh, close enough. Close enough. 
Thank you very much. Now, see, now there's Jeff. Jeff is doing a character. Now, how'd you come up with Moody? How'd you come up with that? Character? I was actually in prison in the uh, old Soviet Union uh, in 1968, and he was my roommate. Uh, I tell uh, me again, because I'm going to do a spit take from Albert Brooks. I'm <laughs> doing a pen take. Watch this. How'd you uh, find out about Moody later? How'd I you was. Uh, long story short, I was in prison in. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, uh, so you uh, you developed that, that. That's a very unusual character. Not a lot. I actually of lived in in Zurich, Switzerland, for uh, a couple of years. I, I and that uh, that accent is uh, official, uh, Swiss uh, uh, Schweizerdeutsch. You know, the all the people in Switzerland always say "Ganz genau" and "Ganz soli," and yeah, that's how they talk. It's kind of like a lot of people think it's Swedish, and they're wrong. And uh, those people are just plain they're, wrong. They're, and they're dumb. <laughs> You know who you are. Yeah. Um, all right, now, now uh, before we close, I want to I want to get to we have this. To go. Well, I want to I want to get to oh. this this one thing okay. about being a master ventriloquist, okay. because that's another one of your skills besides improvising and character work. I it's, mean, Jeff it's is something I do. Pretty much a legend. Um, can you uh, before? Let, let, why don't we do? Well, I'll you tell you, before we do this, let's go to a video, and then we'll come back and do uh, the the. Now this is the video. This is the one I should I should explain. We were um, I was working with Donny Osmond and we were doing a bunch of um, comedy videos while he was working on Dancing with the Stars. And he's an old friend. I used to write on his show. Anyway, I brought in different actors and we did some some sketches, some bits with Donny on video. We took like no more than 20 minutes to set them up and shoot them and edit them. I mean, it was crazy. One of the videos I brought Jeff in as to do his ventriloquist uh, act for Donny. And sometimes, behind the scenes, people are not able to keep a straight face. Take a look and watch uh, Jeff working with Donny you know, Osmond I'm right a now. Message from, oh, is there some? Yeah, I think there's a technical issue. Is there a problem? Oh, the video. It, there's, we don't have the video. We do or we don't? We don't. All right, we don't have the video. That's fine. Thank you for, uh, for telling me, because otherwise it would have been very strange. Um, but this is live. That's the beauty of this. This is completely live. Well, why don't we go to, uh, why don't well, we... Well, you know what, uh, let's... Should I'll, we do the, we, the... You know, the video's on YouTube or somewhere. It is on YouTube, and what There's you should something. punch up, you should look at uh, YouTube no. and, and look at uh, Jeff Bolt, or look up Donny Osmond, and then you can find this video. It's it's Jeff cracking Donny up. He completely loses. Well, no, it. Uh, yeah, what, what it is is, uh, well, I, because I am, I'm a pretty good ventriloquist. I mean, the kids love me, you know. And uh, you had an idea to, to and I, I think Donnie and, and Marie probably both don't realize how badly they need a new opening act for their show at the uh, Flamingo, At right? the Flamingo. They're there for right. two years, and they need an opening act, and I right. thought that you'd be perfect because you're right. because a novelty I, variety. I, and there are so many uh, bad ventriloquists out there, I yeah. mean, just awful. And, I mean, everybody thinks they're uh, a, a master, a puppet master, and, uh, and they're not. I do an act with, uh, I actually don't have the Bobby with me, Bob the puppet. I'd love to do it for you now if I could. You don't have the puppet. I don't have, I don't have Bobby, the, the Bobby, pup, Bobby. Bobby is, uh, in my act, I'm, I'm Danny and Bobby is Bobby the puppet and he's, I, he's, in, he's still in San Francisco. He had the sniffles. Can he was I, sick. Can I talk to you for a second? We talked about having Bobby where, come on, I mean, I don't know if we can do this without Bobby. Um. At the airport. At the airport. They. Is there any? Did you bring someone I brought, else? I bought another puppet. I, I don't know if it's going to be as good as Bobby. Yeah. Let's try. Let's see what we got there. Because I, I had heard, you know, when we spoke, I had booked both you and Bobby. Um, well, this is this is another uh, puppet. Who is that? Zeddy. Hi, I'm Eddie. I'm Eddie, and uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, Danny. So you know, kids. Show us how you do. Uh, well, you know, we. I'm Danny, and and I'm and this is uh, Eddie. I'm Eddie, and I'm Danny, and you know, uh, uh, Danny, uh, Eddie, and I, Eddie, and I get cards and letters from boys and girls around the country, mostly asking uh, Eddie what uh, what it's like being a puppet in show business. Well, um. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Danny. It's true. True. It's not really. We get a lot of cards and letters from a lot of boys and girls around the country. You know, mostly asking me, Eddie, 
what it's like being a puppet in show business, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, well, um, you know, most of, most of the people that are familiar with puppets, they're little kids, you know, they don't, they, uh, they're, they, they kind of, uh, they're more, uh, familiar with Bert and Ernie, you know, and so they're not, they're not used to, uh, the type of ventriloquism that, that we do, that Danny and, uh, Eddie do, because they don't, they're too young, they go to, they're too young to, to go to school, you know, they'll sit at home and watch, uh, Bert and, uh, Burton, uh, what the f Who's the other guy, the other guy's name? Burton, uh, Bernie. Bert or Bernie, you know. <laughs> so they don't, they don't, they're not familiar, familiar with the way a real ventriloquist acts because in my, our act, Danny and I, we do a lot of more political material. You know, for instance, during the elections in 19, uh, 2008, you know, we were mad at the Republicans because they took us to a war that didn't, that we didn't need to be in, and lots of people were affected by it in a different way. <laughs> you know, so uh, kids don't really, they're not adept at that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we'll talk more on things that are concerning um, uh, older people, you know, like a, a marriage relationship like you have. I understand that you're having some commitment problems with you wife and that's inappropriate and so I think that lots of times that people don't seem to get that problem that there we should deal with the I issues that concern us most as adults and for instance I've been married for 12 for as many years and I met why do you just get up and walk out on a guy that you've been married to just because he leaves to, you know underpants at the foot of the bed because it's hot in there and so so you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let's uh, let's uh, that you've just been watching the the genius of uh, Jeff Bolt doing <laughs> characters and while you guys settle down, uh, I think let's take a look at that video that we were talking about earlier. We have it now. Uh, this is uh, Jeff working with uh, Donny Osmond. Oh, is this with Bobby? This is with Bobby, the other puppet. This is not. I don't think. I think you should put Eddie away. Here we go. Yeah, for three days at the Carl Jung Institute in Zurich, Switzerland. But uh, can you give I me, don't. Uh, uh, can you give me some French? Well, that's the was the problem. I didn't speak it, but they didn't. The kids had, they had no way really of knowing. But whenever they would ask a question, you know, raise their hand, I just ignore them like the French people would do. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out. <laughs> Did not work out. <laughs> and I drove. I'm sorry, I can't hold it. <laughs> This way back. You're killing me. <laughs> huh? That's unbelievable. That is, uh, that's Donny Osmond complete. He lost it for a lot longer than that. We had a, a lot of fun. He's a great guy, and Jeff uh, broke him up, of course, as he does everybody. Um, <clears throat> I guess, uh, you know, that's fan. That's, that, that stuff is fantastic. Because you've just seen, now there are a lot of different kinds of comedians out there, <clears throat> but Jeff has just shown you a character. He's shown you another bit. He's shown you material. And, uh, or is that not an act? Was that real, all that stuff? What are you talking about? Okay. Um, Jeff Bolt, everybody. This Week in Comedy, Jeff Bolt. Thank you so much. Oh, oh thank you. God. Congratulations. Jeff. So great. great. So I'm great such to a see fan you. of yours. Well, thank you very much. And uh, So, who, now what we're going to do... Who cuts like the... Is there, like, is there any compensation at all for this? We can talk about this at our regular time uh, on the okay, phone. So, so after, basically you're a liar. <laughs> I don't, I, you told me you wouldn't make a scene. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> at any rate, so Jeff Krasnick Bolt, ladies and gentlemen, uh, has been here. Uh, we're going to remain friends, uh, but it's not going to be easy. All right. So this week in comedy, uh, you're watching the Father's Day edition of This Week in Comedy, and uh, right now, I guess I'd like to uh, read my horoscope on the air. No, I'd like to. Uh, tell you that we have all types of uh, shows coming up. We have, um, we're going to have Andy Kindler coming up uh, shortly in the next couple weeks. Andy Kindler from, uh, of course, Last Comic Standing. Uh, there's nothing funnier than Andy as a judge. Uh, we also are going to have Eddie Pepitone, the comedy of Eddie Pepitone. We're going to have a special show on animation uh, featuring comedy writing for animation. We're going to have Mike Rowe of Futurama. We're going to have Bill Odenkirk of The Simpsons. And we're going to have Jonathan Katz, 
uh, on the Skype. So that's going to be a great show coming up in a couple weeks. We'll all, we're also having a show about horror and comedy, the relationship between horror and comedy. And if you've seen me work, you know what I'm talking about. Um, Richard Matheson, uh, the great horror and comedy writer, a good friend of mine, and my mentor, Norman Steinberg, wrote a, wrote a little film called uh, My Favorite Year and another one called Blazing Saddles, along with Mel Brooks. We're also going to be featuring the producer of Young Frankenstein. Uh, that'll be Michael Gruskoff. All of those kind of shows are coming up on This Week in Comedy. But that's not happening right now. What's happening right now are two gentlemen who are some of the real rising stars in comedy. They're a comedy team, which is, first of all, unusual and I think problematic. Um, and uh, <laughs> their names are Evan Mann and Gareth Reynolds. Please welcome Evan and Gareth. What's up, Ed? Go. How you doing, guys? How are you? Pleasure to see you. You know what? I didn't even recognize you earlier because of your haircut. When you were oh, out there, I thought that I'm the one that got the haircut. I thought you were just an asshole. No, no, oh, no. I really okay. didn't recognize good. you. All right, good. I no, because was... I was looking at you and I was like, why? Who's that guy? Yeah, no, I noticed. <laughs> I saw Blake stare. I thought, all right, well, it's one of those things. No, you look so different, <laughs> both of you. Is this yeah. like a summer... It's a summer for me. It's a summer cut. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Well, we had uh, makeovers. We had um, makeovers. We went on Maury. And you. And, and we had makeovers. We went to boot camp because we were both bad. But then we went. Was uh, it was it booty boot camp? Boot camp? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's both because we huff we huff draw we huff like spray paint, mm -hmm. and, and then we had big bottoms. So it was a boot camp. It was a combo show <laughs> for a booty. <laughs> And then once we completed the boot camp, that's when we got the makeovers. <laughs> you had to complete it first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A training course. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Now, for those of you who don't know, Evan and Gareth have like 100 videos on, uh, on the web that are all brilliant. It's more like seven, actually. Seven and it's more like videos. Mm -hmm. And it's more like some. And some, some of them yeah. are brilliant. <laughs> um, you guys, now, first, I got to go back to your, your comedy team. Now, how did you guys uh, first meet? Let's just, just, let's just let the folks in uh, at the beginning and... Go with me on that, and then we can get into it. Gareth loves to tell our story. I really you do. Tell the story? Um, uh, I met Evan at college, at Emerson College there's, in Boston. There's no reason to be depressed over it. <laughs> well, well I, let's be honest, I'm not excited. <laughs> All of a sudden, you got to, like, the voice went down. Uh, You're like the Ken Burns of depression right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what, so what is uh, it? Well, I met Evan at um, Emerson that's College. Telling you that's telling me that's where Brad's stuck. I got to get this out. <laughs> God, please, it's our story. Okay. I don't remember. Okay, um, but we started doing sketch and stuff like that, and then you know moved out. He moved out here. Chasing I followed. Chasing a dream. Yeah. How's it going? Like, oh yeah. Like you said, we're rising, so it's good. Oh, it's yeah. good. Still chasing? Oh yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, I, we, at this point, we believe it's our tail. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not 100. Yeah. percent We're trying to figure now, it out. Now you guys have had some very unusual. I mean, uh, you, you've had some gigs. We've all had gigs that are unusual, but mm -hmm. I think the one that I enjoy the most is the one where you went in search of. Was it the bull? Rodeo, oh, the bull. Oh. testicle festival. Yeah. Testicle festival. Yes. We went in search of balls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're really putting a shine on it. But uh, no, we went to the manhood. testicle festival in yeah. uh, Montana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we uh, ate a lot of deep fried bull testicles. Yep. Yeah. And saw some things, and saw some horrible, horrible things. We call it, it, it was like a biker orgy murder party. That's how mm -hmm. we described mm -hmm. the testicle festival in yeah, Missoula, to Montana. To the police, that's how we described yeah. it. Yeah. But the beauty of, of you guys is that you have each other. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you're doing, like if I'm at the test, if I'm at the festival, it's just me walking <laughs> well, Ed, around right. like a rodeo Ed, clown. Ed, Ed. Then it's Ed. a normal Thursday. If you're I'm at the a festival. Jewish rodeo clown. Ed. I'm like, oh, look at my chap. I, I mean, right. I don't know how right. bad it was that. <laughs> um, that was like a half ass really good at the bad end. thing. Uh, yeah, you know, but it was half ass. Um, so all right, well, let me. Let, so let me let me ask you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do each person. Uh, Ed, uh, that's no, I have you're to gonna do, do each of us. Not so much. I mean, um, I'm gonna language today. In my in my time, that meant something else. All right. Oh. Anyway. Oh, by the way, I should say to you folks, I should bring you in. Uh, if people want to, uh, if people want to tweet, how'd you like that? Um, they, can, they can go right in, and they can go on Twitter. They can they can go to T W I uh, pound T W I C O M T W I C O M pound T W I C O M and you can tweet in. We're going to have questions. I'm going to give you prizes. I swear to God, I had a prize for you. This is 25, 25 years of Saturday Night Live music. I brought it in from the Krasnick Private Reserve in uh, Ensenada. Right. Oh. Sounds good, right? Comedy name? Well, I don't know if it sounds good. All right. There's no need to right. shout. Uh, all right. So here, so here we have the, and I was going to do, we have a game called The Rule of Three. And it's basically three questions, and if you answer any of them, or if you answer all of them correctly, you get 
this video. And basically, I was going to ask you three. I don't have time to ask you three, but I'm just going to ask you. Albert Brooks is in the movie uh, Broadcast News. And in that movie, he does a great scene where he's at home getting drunk while William Hurt is doing well on the air. And he starts making up words, and he makes them words up to a, a special song, an R&B hit. What is the song? If you can hit pound, T-W-I-C-O-M, you, you tweet in. The answer to that question, what is the song that Albert Brooks is improvising to, you will win 25 years Saturday Night Live from the Krasnick Private Reserve. Could I have made that any longer no, or cut crap. your no, momentum? Well I can't wait yeah. to find out how it ends. What happens at the end? Oh, I can't do it. Oh, God. It's a cliffhanger. Oh, good. Keep watching. Mm -hmm. um, at any rate, so so I guess I'm going to go to you first, Thank uh, you. Gareth. Uh, pretend that Evan is not here. I am, always am. Hello. What is your least favorite thing uh, about him? Uh, he is not here not at the moment. Here. I could actually leave, actually. Woo! Well, if he's not here, then I won't say that shirt. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> right. what, my least... what, what, what bothers you? A quirk that he has, Well, maybe. I think one of the things is that, you know, we spend a lot of time together right. doing a lot of stuff, so sometimes it's little things. Right. Um, but I think something that Evan does that I'm not crazy about... Not here. Right, sorry. <laughs> then what am I doing? <laughs> then that looks weird. That must look crazy. Um... <laughs> Is he has one of those? He has one of those uh, noisy phones. Cell phone. He has a, it's a cell phone. That's what the kids are calling it. <laughs> one of those noisy. I call phone. it a car phone for your pocket. But regardless, <laughs> he has one of those droid phones that sounds like. Yeah. A, it sounds like a robot. I, there's only really three things that I think a phone can do, which is get texts, emails, and calls. Right. And yet somehow that phone. Shuts up. I feel like that was a good answer. That is a good answer. What is the ringtone that you have on the phone? It's always beeping and bopping, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, bopping. it's just beeping and bopping all the time. Medically speaking, it's just beeping and bopping. Are you channeling my Aunt Rifka right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's like something she would say, Garrett's that the, that the phone is beeping does, and bopping. You're like scat jazz. You're like, uh, you're like the Ella Fitzgerald of ringtones Thank right you. now. Thank right you. now you are. Thank you. Well, Next week, I don't know. Uh -huh. um, all right, so that, now I'm going to go to, go to Evan. Uh, Gareth is not here. What what irks you? Oh, he's so racist. He's a racist. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Okay. Um, Can I what talk is it that during... what okay. is it what is the basic uh, you know fundamental the, issue? Well, it's not this honestly. This is actually kind of a double-edged sword. But one of the things, in all honesty, that Gareth and I do, is when um, that like we can kind of commiserate together and we can get each other to, like if something's annoying us, we're always experiencing everything together, which is kind of a blessing in some ways, and in other ways it can be, you know, we could just be, compile and make a problem much worse because we know everything about, you know what I mean? It's not, sure. like, it's not sure. like talking to someone who has no idea. Right. It's like it's always yes and, and this is also why it sucks. And you add no. to the issue. That's not right. my you fault. add to the issue. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm here and I've been here the whole time. Well, I'll stick with the racist thing then. Thank you. Okay, good. I'm glad you Thank went you. back. Um, <clears throat> nothing funnier than, all right. Well, anyway, um, now the other thing I wanted to ask you guys is what, uh, being, being a team is like being married. It really is like being married. There's really very little difference. There's not one difference. <laughs> There's not one thing that is different. What is the most, uh, like how do you guys stay together? Because really, I had a partner at one point and uh, he's no longer with us. Go there. Um, no, I- I was the six. I don't want to go into it All here. Right. Not here and not now. Right, right. Uh, certainly not here. Um, and anyway, what what is the what what is the secret of what how you guys stay together? Work? Yeah, how do you do it? Communication, I would think, is one thing. Yeah. You guys don't hold on to issues, right? You'll get it off your chest and then you move on, right? Yeah. yeah. We bury things. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, there's oh, a glaring shit. difference. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. This was going to come up. Uh, I think. Uh, I think it. I mean, at this point, it sort of is like we speak a language between twins. Right. So I think there is just kind of an inherent, uh, you know, bond within that that's just sort of like Evan and I kind of have a goal, um, and it is to use people to our advantage for war. Um, but we have a goal. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's not a goal. But what, But we, we really, you know, work towards that goal, and I think... Uh, now, now here's, here could be an issue, because I'm going to call it the Yoko principle. Let's say that you have, you start dating somebody, that oh. you can't stand. Well, if it's Yoko Ono, then I think I'm right. Yeah. That would be great for me, though. I would love that. <laughs> She's got a lot going on right now, so. 
She's hot yeah, now. She's now really I mean, I mean, right commercially now. hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and what about what about you? I mean, is that is that has that ever been a problem? Seriously, I would dating? think. No. I would think if anything, like you know, Evan Evan's girlfriend is very understanding, but I would think if anything, she would have a problem with me. Because, and I'll bring this up. You know that this is the one one of the things that I really love your ability to do this, mm -hmm. and that's to role play mm -hmm. uh, being a, being a woman and dealing in a, with a relationship, dealing with relationship issues. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not going to make you do it, mm -hmm. but I just want to hear mm -hmm. the voice one time. So let's but say I was having a problem. Let's say let's say I was having a problem, and I'm okay. talking to you. All you're right. my wife. You're my girlfriend. Well, I'm not. But what I'm going to do is for a fee, put you there by having a discussion, so go ahead. Um, this is, by the way, this is the comedy slap of a table. This is... Show me boy, comedy! Boy, that was really too bad. That was not good. And now um, it's funny. I get it now. Mm, when my pain Got is funny. Got me at the end. All right. um, Okay, so, uh, honey, I really feel like we need to... Uh, I feel like we need to get some, some things out. We've been holding on to a lot of stuff. Uh, I feel like you've been holding on to a lot of stuff while I have been pretty open. I've been expressive, I've cooked. So why don't you just start and then we'll go uh, from there. I mean, I feel like we need to talk more. That's what we're doing, that's ridiculous. That's like saying I wanna skydive more when you're skydiving. And scene. Uh, okay, so good. <laughs> that's good. good, I like that. Did we get it? There's nobody who, who does that better than you guys, the, the, the rollover, that's one of the things that I love. Evan, the Evan I, is I key to that, that bit. Time. Evan is key to that bit. <laughs> yeah. Even though he doesn't All say right. or do anything. It's yeah. really about it doesn't uh, you exuding show me the, an energy. Do show me how you do it. Okay. You do, you're going to do it with him. I'm going to do it with do him? Do what? Yeah. Oh, the, He's gonna the do thing like again? I feel okay. like it didn't go good. No, it show, went well. It went well. Uh, I'm the girl again? Yeah. I want to be the girl. Can we both be, can we be lesbians? Can we can be I, lesbians? Can we, not, can we not debate this? All right, at this all right. Point? <laughs> all right, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. So we're not going to be lesbians. All right. Hey, Ben. I feel your distance. No. Um... There's actually some things I wanted to talk to you about, um, and it's not, it's that, look, I, I know you've been thinking that things are strange between us right now, but I want you to know that what I need from you is, um, is just to be yourself around me, because I feel like you're... See what I did there? Now, I made him go on forever, <laughs> right. which is funny. Now right. I made it funny again. Right. Mm -hmm. You brought it around. I brought it around. Yeah. And it's amazing how silence is a potential comedy weapon. Look at Penn and Teller. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have no well, idea what I'm saying well, at this point. I just other, stopped the show. Are there any other examples? It nope. feels like that's the only one. <laughs> that's right? it. Just making sure. That's it. Just making Look sure. Look at Fatty Arbuckle. Chaplin. Look at Geraldine Chap. I mean, Charlie Chaplin. Mm-hmm. Look at the Chaplin in the Navy. He's a funny guy. Said that. Um, all right. So now, now the other thing is, you uh, you guys are writers. You write as a team, and you've written some shows. You did some mm -hmm. things for Comedy Central. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that process like of writing? Because uh, and do you improvise well, on top of what you write? Uh, yes, yes. We actually had it's huge news. We're doing a pilot with MTV. There, it's out there now. Amazing. Tell me, tell me again. Go ahead. And I'll, I'll try to do. I a don't slow. want to. I'll do a slow burn. Go ahead. Ed, we're doing another pilot with MTV. You're doing what? <laughs> good. That was good. All right. Uh, but yeah, no. Normally, we when we write something, we we do uh, improvise it. You know, when we yeah, we just kind of shoot it. Because a lot of the stuff we write is obviously for ourselves, so it's easy to jump into those Evan and Gareth characters. So you, impro yeah, you improvise to play it the characters first and then and then write it. No. No. We'll no. like talk. You know. I mean. Wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. Wrong, no. We uh, we just kind of outline what we want to do, and then and then figure out the scene, and then and then kind of improvise some dialogue, and then just start writing. You know, whatever's funny. Mm -hmm. Sorry, right, that's actually not accurate, but I'll pretend it is. Right. I don't, well, I don't even know what our process is. I'm glad is. you're both on the same page. Yeah. No, uh, but but obviously you you guys have been you've been doing it for a while now. You met in you met at Emerson, uh -huh. right? right? Emerson yep. College, yes, in Boston. Yep. yep. A shout out to Jim Lane, uh, one of my best friends who runs Emerson out here. To Jim Lane. Jimmy. Jim. All right. And uh, and so and the, one of the first things that you guys did was you did this thing for Axe Body. Was it Axe Body? We did spray? something for Axe Body. Yeah. Spray. yeah. What? Tell us what you did. Tell us. We what you did. Uh, we traveled the country writing the playbook on how to meet women. And it was, yeah, yeah, pretty big. Um, and, uh, and it did it for a long time. Yeah, like, so we were on the road for the better part of a year, actually. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. The worst part of not a year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. What, what were some of the ups and downs of that kind of experience? Uh, some of the ups were getting to talk to a lot of women 
Um, some of the downs was being involved in a pretty... In a uh, giant commercial. Yeah, a pretty tough ad campaign. So the idea was that you guys are the experts, but right. you really are not good at it. Right, right, basically. And we were trying to, you know, be funny while doing that, but then a lot of times they would... Um, they were trying to sell soap. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so is that... Pretty much the story that of media classic <laughs> conflict, you know? isn't it? Yeah. An age old question. Boy the... meets network, network meets boy, boy loses network, and girl Soaps goes away. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And there's soap. Something like that. Yeah. Um, wow. So so this went on for you. But that... but did it was it beneficial in any way well, for you? Well that's actually how we got our Comedy Central show. I right. mean, it came about through that. We it, we made a ton of online videos and that was the thing that, that got us in the door to production company and then we sold that to sold that particular show to Comedy Central. Um, and then it turned into a nightmare much later. Mm -hmm. So it, it stopped being a nightmare and then it went back to the nightmare. Well, there was the writer's <coughs> strike. So right. it was like we were in everyone's nightmare. Right. Wow. Right. Yeah. yeah, that was an amazing time. Oh, but, gosh. But one of the best things about the, I mean, there, there weren't very many good things about the writer's strike, but one of the best things about it was standing on line at the picket lines and actually seeing people you hadn't seen in a while. Yeah. Right. It really was like a bar mitzvah. I, similarly, what I found good about it was that I, you know, when I would tell people that I was on the picket lines with them, uh, being able to be home. Right. You didn't go. No, but I but said I did. But you reaped the benefits. But I said I did. You see, you're learning. It really is almost a course in how to. <laughs> it's a how to. That's what I want this show to be. I want it to be a how to. Good. How to do it. That's some solid air quotes. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. Good. Look at you and look at this. Okay. Look over there there's and do that. Of, there's, can I just say that All there's right. a little too much pointing, I think, for. Look at this. Woo! And you're going to pull something. Woo! And I want to show. <laughs> and that, I loved it. That was the move. You got me at the end. I Boom. want to show you the freedom of, of being in a in a box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> being in a self-enclosed <laughs> prison. Do this and go there. All right. And woo! All right. All right. Well, anyway, I, um, I'm i very grateful. Ed, I don't know to who. Ed, no. we adore you. This is Thank you. We adore you. This, we this adore you. For us. I should say, now I, I'm going to plug it, even though uh, we don't benefit by it, but uh, it's not creative does, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug it. Is if you ever get a chance, check out something called The Writer's Room. We produced it. We acted yeah. in it. These guys are great in it. It's online. You can go, you see it at Hulu.com. Uh, you can see it, I think, I'm sure you can see it anywhere, really, but it's called The Writer's Room. It's about the relationships between writers on a late-night talk show hosted by Kevin Pollack. Whoa. And it's very funny, and it's got... I don't and know, it's very much the, the Ed Krasnick show. It's hilarious. Well, of yeah, course it's... No, I, uh, no but, I, but you guys were great. Everybody came in, and they basically they improvised. I agree with that. And it, and it, was, it was terrific. But I, I will tell you that all... You know, there, there were reviews of that show, like in The Hollywood Reporter and stuff like that, and really fantastic reviews. It, a lot of people saw it. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely heard a lot you know, of people saying you know, stuff about and, it, it was and, great. And if you didn't see it, you should, you should check it out. Anyway, um, uh, I know I had some, uh, the other thing I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you about, well you do, so you do a lot of videos online now, is there a team of people, like do you have the same director, is there, how do you, how, first of all, take them through the process of how you create, your, how, how you create these videos. Uh, well, the good ones uh, normally start with just kind of an idea, yeah. like, um, you know, we have this one video that's called Jag Off, which is about me and him getting into a contest of do your best Jagger, so we have to, like, do our best Mick Jagger impl impressions, not impressions. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's a very funny way. video, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Very Thank good. You. Thanks yeah. so much. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't raise my voice, but it really, <laughs> well, I undersold it, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, but, you know, they normally just kind of start with an idea like that, and then... From there, you just kind of try to, you know, spread it out a little bit yeah. and make it make it about a story and kind of try to, you know, at least try to give some sort of character. A lot of times, they start it. the ideas start when we're working on something else, you know, just the like we're writing we're something else. We're not focused on the project yeah. we're working on. And then right. some, and then an idea comes up. You say, like, "Wow, we got to do that." Actually, you know, Dragon Slayer is a video we made about um, cougar hunting, but for seventy plus women, is uh, based on um, a friend of ours who swore that he had gone cougar hunting the night prior, but uh, when it turns out we found out how old this, this uh, vixen was, <laughs> it turned out we came up with the phrase dragon slaying, and then we made this whole video about, you know, dating 70 plus women. Right, which was a blast. Age-wise, not over 70 women. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, that's that's great. You guys are so that you have so many funny funny videos. We have. Do you mind if we we brought one in? And this is this a recent one? The one that we have now. What is it? This is going to be the threesome. Yes. Oh yeah, this. That's is, pretty yeah. recent. Yeah. Pretty recent. Okay. Do you want to set this up in any way well, before we play? Well, this is uh, this is a. Uh, I'll look to the the camera. This is a video we made to sort of give back to the female fan mm -hmm. base. This is is the ladies. camera over there? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, there's a handwritten note that says on air. Is that so one that's, on? That's the oh, camera for you? I think it's written so. in blood. Oh God, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> right. uh, but, but, um, but uh, yeah, no, it was definitely a video we wanted to give back to the female yeah. fans. Okay, well, let's take a look right now. Let's take a look at a, a comedy video by Evan and Gareth. This, of course, is called Threesome. Now, oh, go ahead. That's all right. Ladies, hi, hello. Uh, welcome to a virtual three-way experience with Evan and Gareth. Today we're going to make your fantasies come true. Oh, yeah. A quick disclaimer, though. If there's any guys watching this, you should stop watching because this is this is just not made for Not you. for guys. No. But for ladies. Ladies. It's going to get super hot. So hot. So hot. Hot. Fire. Hot. Lava hot. Mm, first, we're going to start with your toes. <laughs> And then we're gonna work our way up your entire body. Mm -hmm. And then we will go. I don't, there's no way she understood that. Mm -hmm. I guess what I wanted was I just wanted my dad to love me and, and to be proud of me. And I still carry a lot of emotional baggage from my parents' divorce with me. Come quick, I found another one up here. Man, what are you doing? We need to evacuate you immediately. Didn't you hear the alarms, man? We're getting everyone out of the building. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so I talked to uh, Kevin. Wait a second. What? I think I found the source of the hot spot. Oh, yeah. I'm burning up. Look at these little embers. Oh, yeah. yeah. These suspenders are chafing my nipples. How's that? Touch our balls. Mm, fuck your hand all over our balls, rubbing them in junk. Mm, you got one hand on my balls and one hand on his. I don't want us to be the couple who is sitting in the restaurant, not talking to each other. You know, that's not us. You got magic hands and I got giant balls. Okay, what? Mm. We only met a little while ago and I know that maybe I'm gushing or, you know, whatever. You're getting a little closer, my buddy. So just back off. Oh, 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 Get the taint. I didn't even ask, but I think we're still, we're gonna do it at the same place. We're just gonna move everything to 9.30. Okay. 9.30? Mmm, yeah. Mmm, play with our boss. Okay, I didn't screen the whole thing. <laughs> uh, so I apologize to half of the Eastern Seaboard right now. No, but I, I tell you, that is, that is extremely funny and uh, hysterical. It's and the, My favorite part of the video is now watching you see the ball bit yeah. for the first time. <laughs> Did not, uh, was not privy to it. Uh, disavow myself of it. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's hysterical. It's very funny. And you say it's part of your new live show? We've been showing it, yeah. We, do, we just did a run of uh, shows at the UCB. We have um, our next live show is going to be at the I.O. West Theater. Okay. Um, what July twenty ninth? Yeah, end of the end of July. End of, end of July. July. What what can can you give us a like what do, what do, what do people see when they come out to see a live Evan and Gareth show? What, what well, are they? Well, we used see? to do a lot of like sketch you know like sketch comedy like you know characters and things like that. But then now basically we just play ourselves and we just have an idea for a show and just a lot of little bits. Mm -hmm. So it's more. Um, you know, more like played to, directly to the audience, talking to the audience, and then... Our new show is a, it's a New Year's Eve show, mm -hmm. so we do, it's, you know, we ask the audience, we say it's December 31st, 2009, 11.35, we're at a club in Daytona Beach, Florida, get ready. Yeah. And then we redo a New Year's Eve show, which yeah. is actually based on an experience when we got hired to do a New Year's Eve show at oh, Sky Bar this last year, and I couldn't, know, you're probably thinking it went great, Ed, train wreck. <laughs> 
<laughs> was the Total biggest, nightmare. That, I know you, you hear Sky Bar, you're like, comedy. But it no. actually... Oh, you're not? No. Oh, yeah. you're not? Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> no, because I've been... Th <clears throat> I went to Sky Bar one night. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, I spent... And, and I had to go... I had to go into a deep therapy yeah. Is that uh, what you session call a right venue? Up. So... Um, mm -hmm. That's... That's not. That's what you call a reason to leave the business. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean it would make you want to leave because it's the worst. No, no, no. Kind what made us want to leave was when they cut our microphones. Yeah. Then we, then we were like, you know what? We're done. Yeah. You know. That's you where we draw this the line. Away. Yeah. yeah. We're not going on. No. No, I've had. Listen, nightmare. I've had. I played in front of the KKK one night. I'm not even kidding. Really? This is the story. This is. I'm in, I'm in Idaho, because you do these tours, right? You right. do the city clubs, but then if you want to make extra money, you go out on their tours, and they had a tour called the Foxtrot Tour. Every tour has a name. I did the Cheese Curd. I did the Rambo Tour. They had, actually have a Rambo Tour. The, 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 the Foxtrot goes, it goes like from San Francisco, and then all of a sudden you're in Idaho <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> you're in Idaho, and you're in Idaho, and I'm with a guy who is a prop act, but he's from that area. Oh, my God. But his act is this. He takes out of a thing his first joke is um, he puts moose antlers on his head. He's a very funny, very nice guy. And a, a so far, guy. But I puts like moose what I'm antlers hearing. on his head, and his first joke is how many people think I have a, too, a little too much moose in my hair? But he does the full antler sure. for that. Is he wearing moose? He's wearing a moose. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So he puts the thing on. Now, I get up there, and it's Moscow, Idaho. There's, there's, you know, there's people up there. It's, uh, there's a region where, you know, there are some KKK people. So they were in the audience, and they started, like, yelling. And, of course, that's all I have to hear because I get real righteous. No, I ran off stage. <laughs> no, I did what anybody would do, and I ran. Right. Uh, that's what you do in those situations. This guy, I run back, and the guy is preparing and putting his moose thing on. Oh, and he God. looks at me straight without cracking a smile and says, I'll see you in 45 minutes. <laughs> and he puts the... I'm going to kill tonight. <laughs> and then I have to get back in the car with him and go another 10 hours I'll for the next you. drive. I will see you, in, see 45 you in 45 minutes. Uh, okay? Man. All right. Great. I mean, that's like one of a thousand, you know. I mean, there, something, when you get to the point where you, you have to, like, figure out what a no-win situation is and you know it right away. Yeah, yeah. And then you just you say. You know it right away. And then you yeah. just say, I'm not trying. Right. I'm going to stop right. trying you go, yeah. because then there's no win situation. You yeah. go to a little place that's dark and you just hide there and mm -hmm. then you just get through it. Yeah. Is, that, is that what happened at the Sky Bar thing? Like, this, can you describe what led up to it? Uh, well, I mean, the Eve apocalypse. Okay. It was epically horrible. Yeah. Here's the thing. People, uh, like, we were going to play at 8.30. We're like, okay, 8.30 on New Year's Eve. There's probably not going to be too many people there. It won't be that bad. You know. By the way, that is obviously how we were approaching it at that point. Like, not being like, oh, 10 o'clock. We yeah, we bed. wanted to be. Because we're it's at 8.30. Nobody's there. It's a dance club. You know, I mean, it's not. And people are not going there to see... Evan and Gareth through comedy, and mm -hmm. they don't, but they don't know about it. Right. It's a complete and no, surprise. Yeah, exactly. No right. one knew that we were. <laughs> right. So um, basically, it, you know, it's re it's uh, remember, it's actually uh, connected to Asia to Cuba, yes, which is a restaurant right there where people were eating their New Year's Eve dinner, and we started doing, and they were playing music, and they wouldn't lower the music when we started our set. Right. And for, well, actually, right off the bat, they told us we were going to do 35 minutes, and they're like, "Can you do 10?" Like, and we go, we can do you one better. We'll do none. <laughs> we don't have to get up. We don't need to do all. any. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they asked us to. And then, yeah, I mean, we started to do I, it. For one thing, we needed a volunteer. And it was literally, we saw a woman who was standing there. And it was like Evan ran up to her and dragged her over. And her husband, who, you know, looked like Arnold Schwarzenegger but bald, was just like, right. I mean, furious. Furious. But, um... But this is this is when we knew things were Another really bad. Another dream come true. This was new. I, I, I was like, okay, happy New Year's, everybody. And the GM, I literally got that line out, and the GM was like, to the DJ. Yeah. We're like, this is not going. Yeah. This is not going. But then out of that, we did end up coming up with the idea to just do a show that we pretend is New Year's Eve because our New Year's Eve show was such a disaster. Right. So then, and and then the show. Well, I, I don't want to spoil it for people who come to the I/O to see it, but it's basically is it a reenactment of that no. type of stuff? No. It's, uh, it's, uh, you're being, he's being funny. Um, it, uh, it is basically... It's the same show. <laughs> it, 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 it's different. I mean, it's kind of like a spoof of that show. Okay, great. Right. Yeah. Because the other show was Memories. Right, yes. yeah, we just Which finished. was a very funny show. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Very funny. Yes. yes. And you had this other thing, that video that I love. We don't, we don't have that, but you should watch. Go on, what's the, net, what's the page that they can find there? Uh, well, All your videos? You, uh, we, we have our website is evanandgareth.tv. Go on evanandgareth.tv. You're going to see... It's going to be evanandgareth.com.
anytime soon. Yes, so yeah. if you're waiting a few days, Evan and Garrett. You might want to wait the extra today. Day. Yeah. yeah. Could that have been You're going to switch it over? From <laughs> we are. We got it back. We got the domain name back. Big lawsuit. Big, big lawyers called yeah. some people in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of yeah. emails. OJ stole it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> He's responsible for everything. We've yeah. only He's got making him. out like a bandit yeah. in prison. Yeah. <laughs> he Literally, controls yeah, he is. everything. He is making out like a bandit. He in really prison, is. I heard. That's yeah. true. You know, the funny thing is that they were going to try and steal his Heisman Trophy. They were going to try and take it back. Right. Well, you know what he did? He 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 put himself in the Heisman Trophy pose. Oh, that's... Said, Anybody that's coming over here, look at this. Right. Look at this guy. Right. Woo! Right. Look at that. And, then, and I heard that ended horribly. Yeah. It ended horribly, I yeah. Because somebody pulled an end around. The key is to be bronzed. Whoa. Don't think I didn't catch it. A lot of people, when I used to date, there, there was a lot of this. I, but how were you as how were you as a dater? What would you say? You know what's amazing about me as a dater? Huh. I am a I'm an amazing uh, date, but I'm exhausted afterwards because I'm putting on a floor show. Is that right? Years ago, I used to date all the time, but I would have these dates. We're going to go. I, I took a woman once to, the like, a first date with me was like, we're going to go have supper in an Italian restaurant in North Beach in San Francisco. Then we're going to go to the Venetian Room, which is like $9 million a ticket. We're going to see the platters. But the platters aren't alive anymore, so we're going to see the platter. <laughs> There's only one guy. And now we're having a date, and the plat we're in the front row. That's the, the date has already cost a billion dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm exhausted. Right. And you're thinking angry about it. at her. And I'm angry at her, yeah. and I'm angry at them. The, the platter. There, I mean, you're guy. furious I at hate the, platter. the platters. And what does he do? He comes up. He's like, the guy is right here. And he's like, ladies and gentlemen, the platter. And he comes out, and he goes, <laughs> only you. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not kidding. And I'm like, tell me about it. Yeah. Only me. I hate uh, you and you. You know, I mean, that's like, that's what I mean, what we big... could just call you the platter. I'm in. <laughs> I mean, I'm was, into it. This place was crazy. There's a guy, a wonderful composer named, named Dick Bright, uh, an orchestra leader, and I just did a show with him. He's great up in the Bay Area. Anyway, he used to be the orchestra leader for the Venetian Room. The Venetian Room isn't the Fairmont Hotel. It's like, this is where all, like Tony Bennett is playing the Venetian Room. Right. Lou Rawls was there one night. Uh, Lou Rawls was in, and he comes out, and he's wear he wears a canary yellow sweater. It's Lou Rawls. And he comes out, and they go through a rehearsal. I used to go hang out there. and They go through the rehearsal, and Lou Rawls is like steaming. I'm there. Lou Rawls mad. It's like an impression, you know. And he, he's like, uh, Lou, how'd that go for you? Well, Dick, I don't know what to tell you. If you can't hear it, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and it's like Lou Rawls in a canary yellow sweater. If you can't hear it, I don't know what to tell you. And I'm like, I, li I love moments like that. Yeah. I live from, but not this. Not only you. Yeah. Yeah. I was a da I was a dater. I, I dated a lot, but I wouldn't. I How wouldn't... long did you and the wife date before you tied the knot? Um, uh, not really that long. Maybe like six, eight months, something oh, like that. And do you yeah. still put as much effort into your nights out? Yeah, just as the platter in your living room, like, holy you. We don't have commercials, but we're going to take a short break. <laughs> Wait a minute, but. And I'll just hold this position. <laughs> I don't need to deal with this over here and this can't. Booby, uh, um, anyway. baby. No, I mean, I mean, anyway, it was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. But, but, but now you guys, you, you know, you're out. You're, you're, you're playing. The, you're not married. Yeah, well, don't say you're out followed by you're not married for our sake. I mean, not that there's anything wrong Is anybody with it, in? Both... No. <laughs> no. No. You're not. You're, work with me. No, I mean, I, like you guys. So you, do you guys date I, a lot? Do you? I have a girlfriend. You have a girlfriend. I live with. And, she's, and I just want to say hi to her. Hey, baby, I miss you. Thinking about you right now. She's not watching this. She's probably um, not watching she's this. Not, I know um, for a fact she's not watching no. this. No. Now, what, uh, what, tell me the story of you guys. How did you guys meet, you and your girlfriend, My girlfriend? currently? Uh, we met in high school. Yeah. Just Weird, dropped, right? I just dropped that bomb on you. Weird. That's crazy. No. Yeah. Very stable. Yeah. yeah. You met but we didn't actually talk to each other or friends, and then we re-met re up out here. And out now, here? Yeah. How did you, you just found out she was out here? No, we, yeah, we kind of dated on and off in college, and um, then she moved out here a little over a year and a half ago. And So you is, guys live? It's hot and heavy. It's really happening. We Ed. went furniture shopping this morning, Ed. Ed, we I'm sorry. HD this Buttercup's a, having Ed. its twice annual sale. I HD might. Buttercup could be a sponsor. Look at this table. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is really nice. This is a gorgeous this table. A boy, this, by the way, I want to thank Kevin Pollack for this. This is Kevin's table. Oh. He said, because oh. there's other tables that you can have. I had uh, Willie Tyler and Lester gave me their table. And, they, mm -hmm. you know, they were a ventriloquist act in 1948. Uh, but this <laughs> is a, the beauty of my references is Perfect. that there's one man in, in Chicago the who's platter. like going It's the platter who's like, he's I still got it. I remember Willie Tyler and Lester. I remember Krasi. I should get internet. Still uh, bringing the fastball. <laughs> <laughs> Still bringing the fastball. Still yeah. throwing the pill. Uh, <laughs> any, anyway, it's it's. Uh, I don't know what I was saying, but so you did. Now, give me your opinion of the relationship of his Evan relationship and his with his girlfriend shopping an HD Buttercup. Well, I mean, I, it is funny when Evan's delaying meeting up because he's shopping at HD Buttercup or something like that. But they seem to have a pretty uh, good relationship. Um, what are you not telling us? <laughs> <laughs> that I hate both of them. Right, okay. That I can't stand them. Now, what about you? Is it easy? I mean, it's not easy not to meet, meet, Evan's girlfriend. meet ladies. Is it easy to meet ladies? Not easy to meet. Well, for you uh, guys, it probably would be. Uh, I, I'm okay meeting ladies. People come to your show. Do they meet? Do you meet? Uh, does, do you attract the kind of a crowd that you would be, hey, you'd like to meet some it's people? mostly sexy single women. That's mostly our demo. Thank God. Yeah. So. Uh, and no, I, comedy nerds, so it's like a sweet combo. What a wonderful! It's a this is a tough. This is a tough city to date. Uh, it is women in. Yeah, and so, why? Why is that? Why do you think uh, that? Well, is? I just think you know, there's a lot. I mean, a lot of people are out here to to be uh, successful. Not Most, me. No, 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 not you. Which no. is what's so refreshing. I break it. Which is why I wish it you were single. It stops here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, it's a bit of a tough city to date. To yeah. date girls in. Yeah. I'm from Wisconsin, so you know I like. Girls who uh, are fat. <laughs> we just lost Wisconsin. Here, we'll get them back. We love you. That's where the onion is from. Get them back, yeah. So we love the Wisconsin. onion. We love Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, you don't really mean that, obviously. No, no. no I didn't have anything to say at the end. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it around. Uh, now, what, uh, and uh, the other thing, so what? Are you happy like where you guys are at now with your with your career, the stuff that's happening? Uh, you feel like it's, you feel like your act and stuff that you're doing. You feel like it's it's built, and you really know where you're at, and you really know where you're going. I think you know. I think we are probably at the point where I think we are. We definitely feel like the stuff that we do, like the stuff that we write or the stuff we perform, yeah. is the best that's been. But okay. I still think there is a. You know, there's just such a, a lot of times out here, you sell something, you wait six months, right. then you start working on it, and then you wait six months to find out what happens next. So it's mm -hmm. hard to, you know, kind of stay totally invested in that stuff. But, you know, like last week hearing that we got a, our, the MTV pilot was like finally some good news. And then, right. you know, we have other stuff too, but that. Congratulations on that, by the way. That's Thank great. You. That Thank is great. You. And, and uh, what, can you talk about that pilot? Like what it's going to be or? Uh, we, what yeah. type of thing it's going to be? Yeah, Evan is good at this part. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just basically two 11-minute episodes per half hour where we play exaggerated versions of ourselves. It's kind of like Three Stooges in that they're sh each, it's like a short, mm -hmm. and but there are no consequences that kinda take like place. Kind of like a live-action cartoon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which is kind of, I mean, we, we, had, we did a pilot with Comedy Central last year, and this was kind of a reaction to that process and we just wanted to do a show that was funny and fast and kind of a lot more in our voice than that project turned out to be. Okay. And 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 is this thing uh, is it when is it going to be filmed? When are you going to do it? I think in the uh, middle of August. I think we're going to shoot it. And when you do it, uh, I imagine you'll be casting. Uh, mm -hmm. Ed, yes, we will be. We... I imagine. Let's get this on camera. I imagine you'll be looking for. There'll be people playing parts. Don't you think? <laughs> listen. Don't you think for a second, Ed, that you're not, you're not on the radar over here at this airport? Okay, you I... are. I would imagine that you will be looking for people of my ilk. Well, actually, you know, the, you there is a character. You write the MTV demo, there first is, of all. Oh, people there, love me. There is MTV. a character. <laughs> Always. There is a character called Ed Krasnick, and we would love to hear who you see playing him. We're thinking like a Yugoslavian woman. <laughs> yeah. For Ed Krasnick. Yeah. You know, you've obviously been talking to my manager. Yes. By the way, please call me. <laughs> yeah. Where are you? No, it's actually funny when I talk to him. A lot of times he goes. Oh, screw it, it's Ed. Okay, what were you saying? <laughs> I make a lot of friends in this business, and uh, they know who they are. Um, You're talking just to us, right? Yep. Thought so. Well, I'm very excited for you guys. I'm very excited to see you guys, and uh, 
I have just received a, uh, a cue from somebody saying, uh, get out. Oh, that's... Uh, no, it just says to me, it says, get out of show business, and it has a cue at the bottom. Uh -huh. And it's written in a serif? <laughs> Is that like a new thing? <laughs> a serif? Um, very funny comedy word, by the way, serif. That's the comedy word this week. Um, <laughs> At any rate, I, I couldn't be happier to see you guys. I'm very excited about the news. I'm happy uh, that you're happily uh, 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 in a happy relationship. I think HD Buttercup. If you live in LA long enough, eventually you do. This is my new thing. I'm trying to work even, it in a yeah. lot. It's Thank not you, religious or anything, but no, you just, just instinctually start bowing. And, well, I, <laughs> Thank you. Because you're doing it spiritually Thank anyway. Thank you so much. You're you. Yeah, it's good to Thank see you. you. Oh. And good Thank so you. Good to see you. Know, Back to the crew. <laughs> and it's nice to see you guys. You know, I was actually going to do next time we have we have you guys on. I actually want to do this video because I'm going to be. I hope hopefully someday uh, soon I'm going to be pitching a show to Oprah. And when I do, I want to be fully prepared. I would like you to play Oprah. I would like you to play Oprah's assistant. And we'll role play it. I love it. And I'm going to work it out. Yeah. Sounds good. Right. As long as there's like keys under my seat. Fantastic. <laughs> Evan Mann, Ed. Gareth Ed, Reynolds. A pleasure. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you thank so you much for having us. You're the best. Pleasure to see you You're here. The best, though. Look for Evan and Gareth. Go evanandgareth.tv today, come three days from yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I want to wrap this up. This has been another great episode of This Week in Comedy. Uh, next week, and I, I believe, I can't be specific because I'm still working on all the details, but we're either going to have uh, Mike Rowe, Bill Odenkirk, and Jonathan Katz about comedy, writing, and animation, or we're going to have Norman Steinberg and Richard Matheson, writers of films like uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and, and uh, Blazing Saddles and My Favorite Year and and things of that nature, and other things. I'm Ed Krasnick. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, please continue watching us this week in comedy.com. Uh, you can also catch us on iTunes. I want to thank, first of all, Kevin Pollack I want to, for letting me be here. I want to thank Lon Harris for all of his work. Uh, I want to thank Cat Steele for the comedy news. Uh, and I want to thank Jason Calcanis and Mark Jeffrey. Thank you, guys. See you next week. Good night.